evening, New Hope Church family. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad to have you with us on this evening. We welcome you watching on Facebook Live. We welcome you watching on our landing page, www.newhopeeo. And we welcome those who are joining us on our conference call line. We are so excited to have you with us on today. This is the day the Lord has made. We are excited and glad, and we're looking forward to a great study on tonight. All right, you know what time it is. Go ahead and hit that button. Hit that button right there. Yep, hit that arrow. Hit that invite button. Go ahead and invite all of your friends and family to come on and join us in a time of study. Or go ahead and hit that uh, watch party button so that you can uh, host a watch party as we seek to grow in the Word of God on tonight. All right, I'm excited. God has given me a word tonight that I believe is going to help us and push us forward. We pray that everyone's had a good day, and we know that God has something special in store. All right, let's get ready for the word. Come on, let's pray. God, we thank you for the blessedness it is to be able to come together online. Thank you, God, for this time of study, this time of growth, this time of development. God, we thank you for those who are watching uh, from our landing page, those who are streaming from Facebook Live. God, we thank you for each and every person that's joining in on tonight. God, we pray for those who are even watch, uh, for those who are joining us on conference call. God, we know that the word reminds us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So, God, we ask now that your presence will be with us, that you would, God, allow for your spirit, God, to be ever around us, in us, and through us. God, we thank you for the blessing as it is to be able to join together once again to grow and exceed in our faith. God, we love you. We thank you and we honor you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, we are pumped up today. I've been studying today and I want to share with you uh, what God laid on my heart. Uh, grab your Bibles, if you will. And I, I want to talk tonight about feeding your faith, if you will. Or feed your faith would be a better way to say it. Feed your faith, feeding your faith, however you want to say it. Uh, but, but feed your faith. And here, here is the key I want us to, to look at. Uh, when we enter into relationship with God, we enter in through faith. And so we want to look at the, the criticalness of our faith as it relates to the times in which we live. So I want to I want to look at this scripture, uh, Romans chapter 10. I want to start with verse number 14. And then we're just going to kind of unpack a few uh, nuggets, if you will, from this particular verse, these particular verses, because I believe it's going to help you in the days to come. Listen to what the word of the Lord says from the NIV, Romans chapter 10 verse number 14. Listen to what it says. It says, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, listen to this, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. But not all, not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, the Lord who has believed our message. Lord, who has believed our message? Verse 17, this is what we're going to focus in on tonight. Listen to this. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word about Christ. We, we often hear it, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. I'm going to talk about feeding your faith, feeding my faith, feeding our faith. I, I want to be very clear. No matter what you uh, feed, or no, let me say this. Everybody's going to believe in something. You, you're going to have faith in something. That's the bottom line. Let's, let's just be clear about that. You will have faith in something. It's up to you to determine what your faith is in. Stay with me. Stay with me. It's up to you to determine, watch this, what you feed yourself determines what you believe. Come on, stick with me. See, we have to understand that if you're going to grow in your relationship with God, it's going to take faith. Now, listen to this. In order to enter into relationship with Christ, uh, through, with God, through Jesus Christ, you must have faith to believe that he is the son of God. Have faith to believe that he died on the cross for your sins. Have faith and confess that you're a sinner and believe that he got up, that Jesus got up from the grave on the third day. And just like that, you're saved. So watch this. Faith gets you into relationship with God. Faith then gives you access to eternal life, heaven. But yet not many of us choose to live our lives by faith. But faith is the currency of the kingdom. Stay with me. 
So if you are going to have faith, the Bible says that we all are given, if you will, the measure of faith, or we all start off with the same amount of faith, but it's up to you. It's up to me to determine what we do with the faith that we have. You have to grow your faith. Your faith will not grow on its own. You have to intentionally grow your faith. Listen, Hebrews 11 and 6, remember we talked about this the other week. It says, and without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. And it goes on and says that because anyone who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Now, watch this. When we understand then that it is the word of God that builds our faith. All right. Now, now, now we understand that the, in, in Revelation, it says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. But if we're going to build our faith, if we're going to intentionally strengthen our faith, it's going to happen through the word of God. It's going to happen by what you allow to come into your hearing. Because watch this, the more you hear the word, the more you're strengthened by the word. The more you hear the word, the more you're encouraged by the word. And your faith begins to grow based on what you hear. Now, let me, let me say this. You got to be willing to spend time in God's word. Because whatever you spend time hearing is what you'll put your faith in. Come on, stick with me. You got to be careful. I'm not saying don't watch the news to be informed. But I am saying you got to be careful not to give yourself a steady diet of the news, because if you do, it will have you believe in doom and gloom that things are never turn around. And we choose to believe the report of the Lord. And so it's up to us then to make the choice to believe God's word. But you can't just believe and build your faith if you don't spend time with God. So you have to spend time in God's word. Because your faith does not just magically grow. Your faith does not grow from osmosis. It doesn't grow because you're next to somebody that's growing. No, your faith grows when you spend time in the word. The word, if you will, God's word is faith food. In other words, you got to feed yourself every single day. We're going to talk about it in just a minute. Because if you're going to grow in the faith, if you're going to grow in your trust in God, it's going to happen because you spent time in his word. It's going to happen because you're feeding your faith. And see, we got to be careful that we don't try to live in God's kingdom without having faith. The Bible says that we have to have faith. And as a matter of fact, it says if you can have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to this mountain until it be removed. It has to go into the sea. But let's also go even further to understand that the mustard seed, though it is the smallest seed, it grows to one of the largest trees in the garden, which means then our faith ought to be ever increasing. Our faith ought to be ever growing. Our faith ought to be continually every single day getting larger and larger and larger. Hear me when I say this. Our faith matters to God. Our faith, because watch this. God honors faith and faith honors God. Somebody put that in the box for me. Somebody put that in there. God honors faith. And faith honors God. This, this is good because if it's impossible to please him without it, and if you have it, it pleases him, then God honors you having it. And when you have it, it honors him by having it. Did, did I go too fast? Let me go back. See, if God honors faith and faith honors God, and without faith, it is impossible to please God, then when I have faith, God honors me having faith. And when I have faith, it pleases God. And when it pleases God, God honors me by, for having faith by, watch this, responding to me and responding to my faith. See, see, we have to understand that faith, if you will, is what moves God. Faith is what, what, what God is moved by. He, it's, it's, it's what he told Abram, leave your country, leave your father's house and go to a land I'm going to show you. It wasn't that he didn't want Abram to be around his family. He wanted to see his faith. It was the faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that God was willing to see it on display. Because watch this, you got to have, you got to feed your faith in a way that, that, that you're willing to do what's necessary. See, 
no matter what situation you're in, the word of God is consistent. The word of God is the same. And if you can just feed the word into your life, it is the inspired word of God. It is uncorruptible, incorruptible seed. It is on last forever. It will work. It is God's will of God. It is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, which means we need the word of God like today and now, like never before. I need you to hear me, beloved. I need you to hear me. You cannot listen to what everybody's saying around you. Yes, be informed. I'm not saying don't be informed, but you got to get to a place where you be begin to, to put this word in you because when you get the word of God into your life and into it begins to feed your faith because the word reveals God's character. The word reveals how God continues to move in our lives. And we must understand that some things will only happen and not some, but all things will happen according to God's word. His word is his will. His word is his way. And we say things like God moves in mysterious ways. But I got a question for you. Have you really gotten into his word to know how he moves? Watch this. See, when we understand that, 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 that God's word is there for us, it, it, it fuels our faith. It gives us directions. And no matter how you may have planned for things to go, God's word can give your life trajectory. God's word can give your life direction. God's word can order your steps. Just think about what God's word can do. When you wake up in the morning, you can read a proverb. You can read a song. You can read an epistle. You can read a, 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 a letter. I mean, you can read a, a, a revelations. You can read prophecy. You can read history, history books. Where, uh, you can read several types of books. You, you, and see, whatever you read, it'll feed your faith. It doesn't matter if you read Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It doesn't matter if you read Psalm 27 and 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? Because the, the word builds your faith. And when you understand that the word is building your faith, then you will begin to put that word in you. That's why the Bible says, I hide these words in my heart that I may not sin against you. So the word of God is what helps us to grow in our faith so that we are able to trust in the Lord with all of our heart, as Proverbs 3 said, and lean not until our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him and he directs our path. See, when we understand that, that, that God does not do things just because of who we are, he does it because of his word. See, you got to make his word your word. And how do you do that? You got to feed your faith. You have to feed your faith. As a matter of fact, if, if, if I could, I would say it like this, feed your faith and starve your doubts. Because many times we feed ourselves stuff that feed our fears, that feed our doubts, that feed our worry, that feed our anxiety. And so when we begin to feed ourselves those things, then we wonder why we have sleepless nights. We wonder why we, 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 we're questioning if we're going to make it. No, the Bible says I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. Feed that to your faith. You're wondering how, how is this going to end? It, well, the word lets us know. That in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And so we know if God was there in the beginning, we know he'll be there in the end. So we have to understand and make the decision. If you don't hear nothing else I say tonight, I need you to understand during this time of, of quarantine, during this time of pandemic, during this time of uncertainty, you need the word like never before. Yes, pastor is up here on Wednesday. Yes, he's praying on Friday. Yes, he's preaching on and, and teaching on Sunday. But you got to get in the word on your own. You got to feed your faith and starve your doubts. You got to make the conscious decision that you're going to grow your faith. You have to make it. Listen, I can't grow your faith for you. I can give you the word, but it's up to you to take the word and do something with it. See, you got to, you got to, I'll go there. See, most of us wonder why things don't always happen in our lives. And the question becomes, what are you feeding yourself? Because your faith, your faith will become weak if you don't feed it. Your faith will become malnourished if you don't feed it the word. Your faith will become frail and feeble and weary. All oh, why? Because you don't feed it the word of God. And so the word of God is so powerful. Now, I hear what you're saying. I don't know where to start. I got good news. Just start. Somebody type that in for me. Somebody put just start. Just start. See, we often say, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to read. I don't know where to study. I got good news. Just start. 
Just start. I don't care if you start in Genesis. I don't care if you start in John. I don't care if you start in Mark. Just start. Just get going and allow God's word to begin to feed your faith. Because if you just allow the word to feed your faith, start where you are. Stop comparing yourself to other people, right? We are not trying to compare ourselves to other people, but we are trying to personally grow in our relationship with God by strengthening our faith. See, you can't let where you think other people are make you feel bad for where you are. Because watch this. You really don't know where somebody else is. You just worry about you and you grow your faith. You study your work. Somebody can quote 3,200 scriptures, right? And you just know two good ones. Make sure you study those that you know. Grow in those. Develop in those. Just start so that you can move. Let me say this. Nobody starts at the top of a ladder. You start and you begin to grow. And every day you spend time in God's word. And you may not see how you're growing, but watch this. You growing, you growing, you growing little by little. All right, y'all looking at me funny. See, when you understand, you got to make the effort, the energy to, to, to begin to start right where you are and watch how God grows your life. Watch how God grows your faith. Now, that's what's interesting in this text because, see, what, 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 what this text is teaching us is that Paul is talking to the church at Rome and he's saying, listen, Israel had the good news of righteousness, but some of them still chose not to believe. Now, I, wanna, I want you to hear me. After hearing, some chose not to believe. Now, understand the righteousness that was made available was both to the Jew and to the Gentile. God's plan for salvation was both for the Jew and the Gentile. So watch this. There were some who believed what they heard or believed what they heard, but then there were some who heard but did not believe. Because watch this, if they heard and believed, then out of hearing and believing would come confession and the confession was for them to be saved. But watch this. In addition, I like this text because this text says you ought to be grateful that God sends men and women of God to feed you in your faith. That's what we're doing right now. That's, that's what I'm doing right now. That's what technology has allowed us to do in the midst of a pandemic is to constantly seek to feed your faith. That's why I'm very intentional on Sundays, on Wednesdays, on Fridays to make sure that you're seeing um, the man of God feeding your faith so that you can continue to grow and you can become and your faith will be fueled and strengthened. That's why Lady Tracy is making sure and myself that we are seeking to feed God's people and feed their faith so that you can continue to grow. And Paul is trying to explain, listen, he's trying to break it down for them. He says, how blessed are those, beautiful are the feet of those who, who, who bring the good word. He says, how can someone preach unless they're sent? How, how beautiful are those feet? But not all Israelites believed it. How can you believe in the one you have not heard unless someone preaches or teaches it to you? And that's what we're doing right now. But I want you to understand that as we grow in our faith, you got to make the choice to feed your faith. you got to make the choice. that And see, if nothing else, the word of God ought to feed your faith and it ought to hold you. See, so here, here's what it says. He says, consequently. Now, now, where's the consequently coming from? I want you to hear this. He says, but not all Israelites accepted the good news. Look at this. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Verse 17 says, consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. So consequently is in response to what verse 16 says, which Paul begins to quote from Isaiah and says, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? What he said is there were some who chose not to accept or not to believe the good news. And see, good news is that which is antithetical or different from where you are right now. See, good news is that you were a sinner, but you're saved by the grace of God through the blood of Jesus. See, good news is when his word says that, 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 that he'll, he'll lead you in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Good news is them throwing Joseph into a pit, but there is no water at the bottom. Good news is the Hebrew boys been in a fire, but yet the fire not consumed them. Are y'all with me? See, see, good news is, is when you see that, that, that you have a situation in life, but the good news is different from your situation, but your situation doesn't change the good news. The good news changes the situation. 
Teach Dr. Hinton. I'm doing the best I can. Y'all lean in real close. Lean in real close. I need you to hear this. See, when you get this word in your faith and it, and it feeds your faith, then the word helps you to believe that God can change your situation, that God can change your circumstances. And right now in this season, like never before, we need God's word to fuel our faith. We need God's word to build our faith because how many can admit, you, you, your, your faith get weak sometimes. Y'all, y'all, come on, talk to me. I, okay, I know y'all, listen, give me some hearts if you know I'm right. You, you done had some days over these last few weeks where you done tried to balance homeschooling. That's right, I'm talking to parents now. Homeschooling, you done tried to balance working from home. You done tried to figure out how you, how you work from home and you work harder than you did when you were going in. How in the world can you work harder with no commute, with no gas being spent, without having to go out the house and you find yourself not even taking your own lunch break? Come on, talk to me. See, you got to understand in this season, you need a faith that won't quit. You need a faith that says, God, I'm going to trust you. How do you do that? The first thing you do, and I'm moving quickly tonight. The first thing you do is that if you are going to feed your faith, watch this. You have to consistently hear the word of the Lord. You have to consistently hear the word. The first thing, listen to me, is consistently hear the word. All right, watch this. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. See, the beauty of this season that you're in is that you get to watch it live and then you can replay it. It's like, if your faith get weeks in, weak in the middle of the night, you can pull up YouTube, you can pull up Facebook and find a sermon, find a message and play it again. Because watch this, faith comes by hearing. Now, if you really do research, it says hearing the, from the message. That really says, Paul is saying, I need you to understand, the word of God must be heard. It, it, it has to be heard. You got to hear it. The beginning, you got to hear it. And it's, watch this, the, it's, it's the beginning, the progress, and the strength of faith comes by hearing the word. That means you start in faith by hearing the word. You progress in faith by hearing the word, and you're strengthened in your faith by hearing the word. Did y'all hear me? I'm going to say it again. You begin in faith by the word, you progress in faith by the word, and you are strengthened in the faith by the word. So hearing of the word is so is so key. That's why we call it the word of faith, because when you are exposed to the word, it builds your faith. It nourishes your faith. It expands your faith. And see, God gives us a measure of faith, but it's up to you. It's up to me to grow our faith. Come on. Come on. Can I get a witness? Look at, look at somebody in your house. Look at somebody around you. Either put it in the box and say, it's on me to grow it. I got to want the word. I have to go after God. I, I, th there's no excuse. You have time. You can, you can download another message. You can look at the message right here. You can see it. You got to take the time to grow your faith. And what Paul was doing is Paul was letting the, the church at Rome know, listen, you have to expose yourself to the word. Yeah, yeah, I, I know we don't, we, don't, <clears throat> me, we don't like talking about that word exposure, but exposure to the word will grow you. If you expose yourself to the word, it will grow you. Notice, notice what the text says. The text says that, 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 that faith comes from hearing the word. Are y'all hearing me? Faith doesn't grow from people's opinions. Faith doesn't grow because of what somebody said. Faith doesn't grow because of tradition. Faith doesn't grow on man's wisdom. Faith grows by hearing the word of God. Faith grows by hearing the word of God. Somebody at the door. And so, <laughs> woo, I love live. Faith grows by hearing the word of God. See, 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 I know only, only I, I know y'all laughing at pastor, but only pastor gonna laugh at himself. Watch this. See, you gotta understand that w when you grow your faith, when you have fuel to your faith, it helps you to become what God wants you to be. See, you gotta understand that the word brings life. And so, and so, so uh, let, let me see it like this. Um, uh, 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 back in the day, my grandma, she's, she's resting in heaven now. My grandma, Riri, she used to have a whole bunch of plants, plants everywhere, right? And, and she, was, she was a staunch believer that, that you're supposed to talk to your plants. Now, I never got with that 
you know, I never understood that. So one week she left me to take care of her plants. She used to call me Boo. My nickname was Boo to my grandma. I guess everybody's grandma had their own nickname for him, right? So she would call me Boo. She would say, Boo, I want you to take care of my plants for me. And I, you know, that particular week, you know, like any other teenager, I really forgot to take care of the plants. And so by the time, you know, Grandma Ruby comes back, the plants are, are drooping over. They are, you know, just kind of messed up. They, they withered. And she says, what happened to the plants? And I said, you know, uh, uh, Grandma, I took care of them. She said, no way you took care of them. She said, did you feed them? Did, did, you, did you water them? Did you put the plant food in there? Watch this. Did you talk to them? And I said, yes. She says, there's no way that you're telling me that every day you watered the plants, you made sure they got sunlight, you gave them the plant food, and you talked to them, and they still died. Come on, lean in real close. I want you to hear me. There's no way that you can be exposed to the word of God on a daily basis and your faith die. No, 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 no. Your faith will have vitality. Your faith will be strong. Your faith will not quit. Why? Because the word of God grows faith. Now, I got to say this. Got to say it. Growing faith is not for lazy people. All right, let me say it again. Um, feeding your faith is not for lazy people. You have to want to grow your faith. I know that's right. Somebody said busted. Grandma got me good. Yep. See, see you got to want to grow it. And it's repetition that grows your faith. faith. Because when you really do research, it says faith comes by hearing. If you look at it, it's faith comes by hearing. And hearing, and hearing, and hearing, and hearing, and hearing, and hearing, and hearing. Y'all he get it? It's like that, that energizing buddy. Keep going, and going, and going, and going. Listen, so much so that, that marketing, marketing gurus have, they now understand, have always understood the power of repetition. That's why you can be watching TV, see a commercial come on, boom, and another one comes on back to back. And you're thinking, why would they bring that commercial on again right back to back? It's about repetition. Because they understand that what you continuously see, what you continuously hear, you will then desire that. You would then move in that direction. And that's what faith does. Faith says, listen, you got to feed the faith because it's through repetition of the word that grows your faith. You can't just hear it once and think you got it. No, you got to grow it. You got to hear it over and over. Keep exposing yourself to it over and over and over. That's why you have to have a consistent diet of the word of God. Now, I try my best as the pastor of New Hope Baptist Church to make sure that your diet is balanced, that it's not, it's, it's not, it's not off balance. I don't, I don't want to just give you stuff to make you shout and make you happy. I don't want to just give you candy because if I do, you'll end up with no teeth. Come on, talk to me. So I need to make sure that your diet is balanced. And so you got to make sure that when you feed your faith, that every, every, there will be some stuff that ought to convict you in your faith, that ought to challenge you in your faith. That ought to grow you in your faith. That ought to say, don't do that. That ought to say, do that. Your faith, your faith should grow and make you uncomfortable. I know that's right, Auntie. You got to feed your faith because it's through that repetition. It's, it's so faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing, which means then that when you grow in your faith, you can literally read the same scripture and grow from it every day because every day you are different. There is a new revelation. There is the message should be heard. Why? Because the word of God is alive, is active, is pregnant with meaning. And so we must understand that you have to grow in the faith. Now, let me say this. You, you may say, well, I, I, I try to feed my faith, but I don't get nothing out of it. It don't seem like it's making a difference. Watch this. Every day, just do it anyway. Do you know that you can take a slow drop of water and it beat on concrete? Watch this. If you put your hand under that slow drop of water, it won't hurt you. But if you let that water beat on concrete long enough, over a long enough period of time, watch this. It will damage the concrete. Are y'all hearing me? A, a drop of water that will not hurt your hand. If you let that water consistently drop over and over and over and over and over a, a consistent period of time, it will begin to break down the concrete. Now, the concrete is so hard that if you're going to hit it, it'll hurt your hand. But you can put your hand underneath and let the water hit your hand and it won't hurt it. But the power 
of consistency. That drop of water hitting that concrete with consistency will cause it to break down. What are you saying? Let the word of God feed your faith with such a consistency that it begins to break down stuff in you that doesn't belong and it grows your faith so that you can become what God wants you to be. All right, let's move. See, see, see. See, when you understand you got to grow your faith because it'll deal with whatever types of doubt that may rise up. You, you know, it'll deal with head doubt and heart doubt. Head doubt is when you say stuff like, you know, I don't know how he's going to work it out. But heart doubt is when you don't believe he can work it out. Right. So it deals with all those things. See, doubt positions you to be overtaken by your situation. That's why in this season it's so critical that you feed your faith. Because if not, doubt will have you, it, it, it will rob you of receiving God's choice blessings for your life. It'll rob you from experiencing God's power in your life. See, see, that's why, you know, you got to be careful. If you're going to pump anything into your life, make sure you pump in the word. Make, make, sure you, make sure you're not pumping how bad things are and fear and, and everything. Because what you need to do is, is let the word inform your faith. Let the word tell you that there's nothing impossible for God. Let the word tell you that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Let the word tell you I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. Let the word tell you that if you, as Joseph did, sow in a famine, you can still reap a hundredfold in the same famine. Let the word tell you given it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So it's the word then that strengthens us. Now, let me say this. You must make sure that you consistently hear the word. But secondly, watch this. You got to make sure that while you first consistently hear the word, secondly, make sure you believe and receive what you hear. Somebody put that in. It's coming across the screen. Watch this. See, it's, it's one thing to consistently hear the word. But secondly, you got to make sure that you believe and receive what you hear. Remember, Paul was saying that not all the Israelites accepted the word. So, 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 so one of the things, let's wrestle a little bit here. One of the things then that is crucial to you feeding your faith and it benefiting your faith is you believing what you've read. Not only believing, because watch this. He says, consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word of Christ. In other words, <clears throat> I know that's right, Reverend Millie. Word, man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I know that's right. Listen to this. So you got to believe and receive what you hear. You can't just hear the word if you're not going to believe it. You got to believe it and receive it. Because watch this. You can hear something and reject what you hear. Y'all hear me? You can hear the word of God and because you say, I've never heard it before, your first inclination is to reject what you've never heard before. But what you got to do is ask the Holy Spirit, which, which purpose is to lead you and to guide you into all truth, to help you believe and receive many times what you may not even understand. Come on, talk to me, y'all. Okay, don't talk to me. Lean up. Listen to me. Watch this. He says, see, what good is it for you to hear if you're not going to believe what you heard? Because it can go in one ear and out the other. That's why, y'all, see, see, oh, God. See, that's why in a, even in this season of quarantine, this season of us not being able to assemble physically in a building, we're assembling online. We're assembling in what we call our, our e-church, right? We're, we're assembling here. And because of that, we are able to take the word. But you got to make sure that even now, the word is not going in one ear and out the other. You got to make sure that the word you get today, no matter what words you get after this, it don't check. You can, you can go and watch NBC, CBS, uh, uh, TNT, whatever T you want to watch, CNN, please don't, I don't want to say don't watch Fox, but whatever you choose to watch, right? You choose to watch what you choose to watch. You got to know that God's word still is true. Take hold of God's word for your life and move forward with it because you can hear the word. Oh God, you can hear the word and not experience the power of the word. Come on. You can hear the word and not experience the life-changing power that the word brings. 
And so unless you're willing to believe it and receive it, then you, you, oh God, Lord. Okay, let me see if I can put it like this. Demons, watch this, have faith, but they just don't, who, huh, huh, they don't accept what they know. Let, let me see. First lady laughing at me because I got twisted with my words. Isn't that something? The executive producer. She laughing because I'm getting excited. Watch this. So, so, so the Bible says even demons believe and shudder, right? Which means they even know who Christ is. But watch this. When you know something, what do you do with what you know? How do you accept that belief and take that belief and turn it into action? See, because if you don't choose to accept it as truth, the Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So then, so then there has to be a moment that, that, that after you, 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 you feed your faith, there has to be a moment, come on, put this down if you can, that it moves from information to revelation. Somebody put that in the box for me. Thank you, Sister Kyle, I'm trying my best. It ought to come a point when you feed your faith that it moves from information to revelation. Somebody just put that in there. Thank you so much, Brother Brian Ford. Brother Brian Ford from California. Bless you, man. Bless you. Watch this. He says, he says, it got to go from information to revelation. What do you mean? That when you feed your faith, yeah, you may not always get it, but at some point, the light bulb ought to go off. At some point, illumination ought to take place. It ought to go from just being mere information so now it's a revelation. You begin to see this thing differently. When it goes from information to revelation, then guess what's next? Transformation. Woo, that boy is talking tonight. Yes, sir. Preach, Dr. Ham. I'm doing, doing the best I can. Watch this. So it goes from information to revelation and from revelation to transformation. Come on, stay with me. Because the key that God wants us to do is to be transformed to the likeness of the image of his son. And so we go then from information to revelation, from revelation to transformation. See, and that's the goal. It's in transformation that you get delivered. It's in transformation that you get free. It's in transformation that you get redefined. It's in transformation that you get renewed. It's in transformation that God is able to shift things in your life. But if it, in order for it to get the transformation, there ought to have, you got to have a revelation. What is the revelation? You got to see some things differently. You got to see things. I know what the situation looks like. I know what you've been hearing and what they're saying. But when you get a revelation of what God can do, when you get a revelation of how God can move, when you get a revelation of how God can act on your behalf, then you take the information you have, it gives you revelation, and then that produces, guess what? Transformation. That's why the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, therefore, brothers, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable portion of service. Here it is. Be ye not conformed, but be ye transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. See, see we got to understand then that you got to believe and receive in your heart. I know that's right, Deacon Pat. I'm trying my best. You got to believe and receive in your heart because a man, what you believe in your heart, so is he. See, in your heart is, 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 is where your desires are. It's, it's the seed of, of your increase. It's the birthplace of, 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 your, of, your, of your mind, your will, your mind. It's your heart. It's, it's your moral compass. It's the seed of knowledge and wisdom. It, it is it is it's what sets your moral character. In other words, you got to have this trust, this faith, this confidence in your heart that you believe you receive. Watch this. You receive it in such a way that even when your mind says no, your heart says yes. Even when your will says I can't, your heart says yes. Even when your emotions are all over the place, your heart still says God can do it. And I'm trying to tell you in this season, you got to be careful because on any given day, y'all ain't got to be honest. I'll be honest by myself. On any given day, your mind can play tricks on you. Come on, talk to me. And if your heart is not rooted in the word of God, your mind will have you saying, God, where are you? God, why you let this happen? 
God, why did you let that person go home to be with you? God, why? And your mind will start playing tricks on you. And your mind will say, is it ever going to change? Is it ever going to get better? It, what will normal ever look like again? Your mind will start playing tricks on you. And if that ain't enough, your will will start changing on you. And you will start saying stuff like, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know how much more of this I can take. I don't know how much longer. No, 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 no. You got to let the word inform you. That's why. And, and don't, don't please, y'all. Don't get me started. Because there are days where your emotions can get the best of you. Where you saying, I can't take it no more. I don't want to hear of another loved one going home to be with the Lord. I don't, I don't want to hear. I'm tired of it. And your emotions can be all over the place. You wake up and say, it's going to be a great day. Then you get news at nine that, that, so, that something is happening. And before you know it, you're down in the dust. I need you to understand, you got to use the word. It has to be in your heart so that what? It will deal with you when your mind starts tripping, when your will gets frail, and when your emotions are all over the place. Are y'all with me? Watch this. See, when you hear, when you hear the word, come on, come on, catch this. It allows you to integrate what you receive into your belief system. Now, 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 I need you to understand that, that, that your belief system is, 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 is informed or has been shaped uh, by, by people that you hold in esteem or that you deem authority figures. Which means sometimes the word of God may challenge what you believe or what you have been taught. But that's the purpose of the word, to challenge, to rebuke, to grow you. It should do that. See, we, we, we try to interpret everything we hear in light of what we already know. Did y'all hear what I just said? We try to interpret everything that we hear from the word of God in light of what we already know. Which means then it becomes difficult for the word to reveal something new. Because in your mind, you think, I already know it. Are y'all with me? See, when you walk with God, when you try to grow your faith, you, 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 you won't interpret everything through the lens as if you already know. Because I got news for you. There's a whole lot I don't know. The more I study, the more I determine, I discover I don't know. The, more, the, more I, the closer I think I'm getting to God, the further away I see I am. And so we got to be careful that we don't interpret, watch this, fresh word with old beliefs. We got to be careful that we don't interpret fresh word with an old mindset. We got to be careful. So, so we got to make sure, I know that's right, intellectualize. I know that's right. We got to be careful, y'all, that we don't try to interpret everything based on what we already know. No, God knows. He says, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. You better reach a point where you realize and let this word inform you. Watch this. See, many times we choose to re reject the word, because it goes against our environment, what we grew up hearing, what we may have heard in church, who may have said it in church, or who, who we respected what somebody told us that we held in high esteem. And watch this, it, it may even be what life has taught you, what the school of life has taught you. It, it, it may be what traditionally what has been. But uh, it may be what your cousin, your auntie, your big mama, somebody said. But watch this, y'all. We got to know what God's word says. And, and here's what he says. He says, let God's word shape your belief. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, if you're going to believe it and accept it, let God's word be the thing that shapes your belief. Because I, don't, I know you say you never heard. Let God's word shape your belief. All right. So you can only grow from what you choose to receive. And what you choose to receive it, it transforms you. And constantly, if, if you, see, here's what I do. I constantly tell myself, when I'm reading the scripture, this scripture is talking to me. This scripture is about me. This scripture is what God is saying to me. This scripture is God's will for my life. Did y'all hear that? I'm gonna give it to you again. Somebody put them in. Listen, I'm going fast because my time is running out. Watch this. See, when, when you're going to receive this thing and you're going to let this word transform you, these are some things you start to say when you're reading the, the word of God to yourself. You'll say, this scripture is talking to me. Uh, this scripture is about me. This scripture is what God is saying to me. This scripture is God's will for my life. 
All right, I'm gonna get it. Maybe, maybe y'all y'all will put them in for me. Put them in real quick. I know, I know, I know. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Watch this. See, see, you gotta say, say when you're reading, when you when you're feeding your faith. One, you say this, this this is this word is talking to me. Number two, this word is about me. Number three, this word is what God is saying to me. And number four, this word is God's will for my life. I don't care how it looks. You take yourself through those four steps. Yep, this word is talking to me. Yep, this word is about me. Yep, this word is what God is saying to me. Yep, this word is what God's will is for my life. You can be in a moment of lack right now, and you're saying, I don't know how I'm going to make it. And you can, you can see what the scripture says. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. You can say, that scripture is talking to me. That scripture is about me. I am the righteousness of God. I, what, what is it saying? That, what is God's word saying to me? What is it saying to me? That as I'm righteous, I'll never have to beg for bread. What, what is that? That means God's will for my life is that he going to provide. Y'all see how it goes? Watch this. See, regardless of how things may be, you walk yourself through the scripture. Walk yourself through that so that you understand how you're supposed to move. Because remember, you're growing your faith. And, and, and you got to make sure that, that this thing works for you. It, may, it, it, it grows you. So, so you take whatever scripture you read. The Lord is my shepherd. It's talking to me. If he is my shepherd, I am his sheep. It's about me. I am his sheep. He is my shepherd. What does that mean? That means as a sheep, I have tendencies. I got sheepish tendencies. Somebody put that in. I got sheepish tendencies. What does that mean? That means sometimes I have some dumb days and I go wandering off, but he got a rod and a staff that'll hook me if I get into trouble. That If he needs to hit me with it, he'll beat me to bring me back in the line. He, 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 it helps me understand. What, what, what else does it say? It's what God is saying to me. I'm in personal relationship with you. What does it say? It's his will that he's going to lead me to pathways of righteousness. Right? That, that's what we have to understand. All right? If, if this word is right, listen, it will work. Now, it, it, listen, I need y'all to hear me. It will change you while you go through. Y'all hear what I said? God's word will change you as you go through. Say it one more time. Somebody put that in there for me. God's word will change you as you go through. See, now, now I'm, I'm going to go ahead and tell this. Listen, I, listen, if you get, whenever you get a chance, you need to listen to this again because I'm telling you, I'm trying to give as much as I can, but I'm going very, very quickly and I need you to be able to go back and unpack this. You, you, this is one that you need to listen to again so that you can do a replay so that you can really get down these steps of how to, to believe and receive this word because if nothing else, you need to get down if nothing else, you need to get one, when you read a scripture, it's talking to you. Two, you need to get down, it's about me. Three, you need to get down, uh, it's what God is saying to me. And four, you need to get down, it's God's will for your life. So those are some basic steps you got to get down inside of you, right? So so this word will work. It, it will change you while you're going through. And I want you to understand, I said through because in order to get two, you always go through. But most of us, we just want to get two. But we don't want to go through to get two. But transformation normally happens when you're going through. Are y'all with me? See, see, we, we, we are all saying, I'll be glad when this is over. I'm with that. We're just trying to get to. But here's my question. While you're going through, what type of transformation is happening on your way to two? Because watch this. When you get to, you can't be the same person you were before you got to where you're supposed to be at. There has to be a transformation that's happening while you're going through. All right. Here it is. Last but not least, you got the first one. The first one was consistently do what? Come on, talk to me. Yep, I can hear you right in your house. Consistently hear the word. Number two, it was after you consistently hear the word, believe and receive what you hear. Number three, here's the last one. I'll give it to you in the last five minutes. Watch this. He says... Faith comes by hearing, hearing, hearing the message and hearing the message is heard through the word of Christ. So the last piece is after you believe it, you receive it, then you got to obey it. Obey the word. Now, that seems so simple. Seems so simple just to say, pastor, obey the word. Yeah, it seems so simple. Obey the word. Sprite used to have this thing, 
obey your thirst, right? That was saying you should be craving for sprites. Well, this says obey the word. What, what does that mean? That means after you consistently put the word into feed your faith, after you believe and receive the word, watch this, now obey what you believed and received and what you've consistently fed your faith with. Y'all still here? I believe you are. Numbers say you are. Watch this. Obey the word. See, because now the information that brought revelation has brought transformation. And information that brings revelation, that brings transformation, ought to be rooted in obedience. Information that brought revelation, that brings transformation, ought to be rooted in obedience. Somebody put that in there for me. Information that brought revelation, that brought about transformation, has to be rooted in obedience. Now, now that word obedience is a word that we don't like to talk about because when we begin to feed our faith, we just like to hear the word, but not many of us like to do the word. Yeah, I said it. Hearing the word, oh goodness, I, I, I'm, I, I, I'm gonna have to go a little, little, little bit deeper. Hearing the word is the starting point. Believing and receiving is the second tier or the second point. But then you gotta, but oh, you gotta obey what you received and believed in what you heard. Faith, lean in, without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. I know that's right. Sister Regina Cora says, obedience, <coughs> excuse me, is better than sacrifice. See, you have to obey what you've heard and when you obey what you heard, you submit your will to the will of the word. See, see, most people don't associate doing with obedience because for most of us, we want to hear the word and still do what we want to do. That's not how it works. The purpose of hearing the word, the purpose of being informed by the word, the purpose of, being, of, of receiving revelation from the word, the purpose of being transformed by the word is so that it changes your actions. It's the behavioral change. Somebody put that in. The word of God should produce a behavioral change. It should be a change that comes about in your life. See, see, because you can't hear the word and then not do the word. There is a word for that. It's called disobedience. <laughs> Watch this. First thing looking at me because I'm laughing at myself. You, you, can't, you can't not do what you've heard. You cannot unhear the truth. But when you've heard it, now you got to do what you've heard. That's called obedience. Because to hear the word and not do what you've heard is called disobedience. And the question becomes then, and I'm going to go a little bit deeper. Uh, the question becomes, if you hear the word and you don't do the word, then was there any revelation or was there any uh, transformation? Because if you just got information with no revelation and no transformation, it makes obedience very difficult. And we got to be careful because you can hear the word on Sunday. You can hear it on Wednesday. You can hear it on Friday. And watch this. It go in one ear and out the other. But yet you never believe it, receive it, and you don't integrate it into your belief system. And then from there, you don't spend time in it to make sure you obey it and you do it. Then guess what? You're, 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 you're out of the will of the word. So the word then is what fuels and helps us to obey God's activity for our lives. You got to act on what you heard. You got to act on what you're hearing tonight. See, tonight you got to act on the fact that you have time. You, 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 you're in a space where you can set aside 30 minutes just to read your word. You can pull up the Bible app. You don't even have to read it. Just press Find the scripture and press the, the triangle. Just press play. It'll read it to you. If you can hear it that way. That's why the Bible puts it like this. James 1 and 22. Listen to this. He says, be doers of the word and not only hearers. Because if, you do, if you're only a hearer, you're deceiving yourself. You're deceiving yourself. All right. I got three minutes to break this last principle down. Understand, obedience is a choice, right? Same way believing is a choice, same way growing your faith is a choice. Obedience is a choice, 
And it goes back to the fact that we have free will, right? So obedience is a choice. There is no substitute for obedience. All right, let me go a little further. Somebody put this in the box for me. Um, partial obedience is disobedience. Partial obedience is disobedience. See, you can't ever underestimate the power of obedience because when you walk in obedience, then you have an expectation to expect God's results. What do you mean by that, Pastor? When you walk in obedience, then you have a right to expect what God's word says. When you walk in obedience to God's word, you have a right to expect that the promises that you have aligned your faith with, it can be yours. See, and because, see, that's, that's what happened when Paul was talking about that Isaiah said some of the Israelites, they, listen, they, they're not going to receive the word. And some of us, we got to be careful that we, that we don't be like them and not receive the word because if you don't receive it, then you can't do it. And see, it's, it's distorted thinking that will make you think that you can disobey God and still experience the promises of God. Lord, I just said something. Y'all got to hear me again. It is, it is distorted thinking that will make you believe that you can disobey God and still experience the fulfillment of God's promises in your life. I'm gonna say it one more time. It is distorted thinking to think that you can disobey God and expect to experience God's fulfillment of his promises in your life. All right, I'm done. Here's the kicker. If you're gonna have what God's will, you gotta understand that's not how God works. He's not going to bless your disobedience. So what we have to do then is that we got to do what his word says. And, and see, you, you have to understand that a sign of maturity, and I need you to hear me as I'm closing, a sign of maturity is in your actions. Age does not define maturity. I'm going to say that again. Somebody put that in there. Your age does not define maturity. The length of time you've been at church does not define maturity. What defines maturity, and especially spiritual maturity, is based on the choices and the decisions that you make that align you with the word of God. So a sign of maturity is not just learning the word, but doing the word. See, a sign of maturity is when you recognize I have a spiritual conviction, I have a spiritual covenant, a conviction that will not change, and you're convinced that God's word is true. When you understand that, when you understand that, then you have this conviction. I'm closing right here. Watch this. I'm closing right here. Watch this. He says, he says, here it is. You got to make sure that you obey God at any cost. Because here's why. God's word is true. It's a divine grace that will come on your life when you just keep on obeying God. It's a divine grace that will come on your life when you just keep on obeying God. Watch this. Here it is. God says, when you're willing to obey me, I will take care of you. When you're willing to obey me, I will make sure that I do my part. You just keep doing yours. And what I want to suggest in this season, make sure you choose to obey God. Make sure you choose to consistently put the word to feed your faith. Make sure that you're obeying that word. Because if you do, you can, you, can, you can have the blessing, if you will, of, of Deuteronomy chapter 28. When you get a chance in your, in your time to just read, read Deuteronomy 28. I'm closing 30 seconds. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28 that says, it's where we get, you'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you come and blessed when you go. And what these commandments are in Deuteronomy 28, these are promises, if you will, that happens if you obey God. Job 36 and 11 says, if you serve and obey the Lord, watch this, you'll spend your days in prosperity and your years in contentment. I'm done right here. But if, when you get a chance, read Deuteronomy 28. It will let you know that if you obey God, he'll set you high above the nations. You'll be blessed in the city. You'll be blessed in the field. Your kids will be blessed. Your income will be blessed. Your supply will be blessed. You'll be blessed spiritually, physically, materially. Everything you do will be blessed. Watch this. You'll have victory. Not only that, your house will be blessed. You'll be productive. You'll be established as a holy people. An example why, matter of fact, God says, I'll open up the heavens and send rain in this season. You'll always be the head and not the tail. And that's what Deuteronomy 28 talks about because there's power in obedience. So I'm closing right here. 
as we as we as we're grateful to God. Watch this. The kicker is you have to feed your faith. There's no way around it. In this quarantine, many of you say, oh man, I'm eating too much, I'm gaining weight. I got a question for you. Is your faith gaining weight? Is your faith being fed in this season where it's getting heavy? Because I want to let you know, the key to making it out this season is feeding your faith in this season because it's going to be your faith that's going to get us through. I'm done. Listen, I pray, and let me pray real quick. I pray that this bless you on tonight because I want to encourage you to feed your faith. Listen, beloved, I need you to hear me. Make sure you go back over the course of the week to listen to this message again. It's going to bless you. You got to feed your faith. Let's pray. God, I thank you for the blessings of reminding us to feed our faith. Now, God, continue to allow us to grow through the word of God, not only just to hear it, but to receive it, to believe it, and to do it, and to obey it. God, we thank you for every person that listened on tonight, that watched, that viewed. And God, we thank you that faith comes by hearing and hearing by your word. God, now bless us and keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, I thank God for you, and, and we bless God for your attendance on tonight. Listen, you know how we do every Wednesday. We are blessed to be able to give because the Bible reminds us that, that we are called to be givers. We're supposed to be givers to God. We have several ways that we can do that here, uh, uh, even during this time of, of, of pandemic and, and and this time of, of social distancing, though we are not able to go to a building, the building is not the church. We are the church. We are still igniting hope and empowering people. So I want to encourage you. And let me say this. Thank you so much for your benevolence, for your generosity week in and week out. Thank you, New Hope, and those of, uh, who are watching, who are part of our e-church, who, who desire to be a blessing to the kingdom of God. We bless God for you. We thank God for your maturity to continue to sow into the kingdom during this time. And we know that God's word is true. Just like with Joseph, that he sold in the family. He reaped a hundredfold in the midst of that family. And we believe that same anointing, that same grace will be on you. And so if you, you know, for today we want to ask you to give, uh, give your, your offering on tonight. You can go to www.newhopeeo. And there, as our landing page, you're able to give to both Easy Tithe and you're able to give uh, to GiveLify. Or you can download the app to for GiveLify. And you're able to give that way. Just search New Hope Baptist Church of East Orange. Or, last but not least, uh, we have Cash App. Cash App, you're able to, to, to look us up. Uh, dollar sign, New Hope EO. Make sure you put your full name. Uh, put your address. If you have an envelope number, that's great. Put that in there as well. Uh, but we really want to be a blessing to the kingdom on tonight. And we thank God for you. Uh, last but not least, the last way is for those who desire to mail it. That is the, uh, the way that we, we, we are praying that more people would, would do electronically because we want everybody to stay safe. Amen. So for those, please, please, please. I know you may say I've never done electronically. Please try. Just try it. Give through GiveLify. Give through Easy Time. Very easy to do. Just go to New Hope EO and you're able to do that. All right. We are, we are going to believe God that God is going to do it. You're going to see the ways on the screen in just a minute. And then we're going to be right back as we continue to close out this time of Bible study. All right. So let's get ready to close out. Thank you so much for sharing with us on tonight. We're going to move forward. I'm praying God's choice blessings upon you tonight. I thank God for everyone who's on. Thank you so much for being a part of what you do. Listen, you know, we like to spend time, just do some virtual hugs. First lady, give a shout out real quick. Amen. Listen, I want us to make sure, y'all, that we stay connected uh, as, as, we, uh, as we tend to do. Remember Friday? Friday, we'll be right back here uh, live for our uh, time in prayer. And we're going to continue to believe God for that. We want to keep those lifted up who've lost loved ones. Uh, many people have lost loved ones. And we want to pray for those who are infected with the coronavirus, that God will continue to be a blessing to them as we move ahead in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Real quick, go spend some time, do some shout outs, and then I pray that you have a great night in Jesus' name. Bless you, Deaconess Martha. Amen. Bless you, Sister Sylvia, Sister Kareem Wellington. God bless you. Always a pleasure. Bless you, Sister. Amen. Sister Charmaine Jones. I miss the church family as well. I know that's right. Amen. Bless you, Sister Yvette. Hey, First Lady, we love you. Thank you, Pastor, for the word, feeding our faith. Bless you, Sister Rice. Sister Valerie Banks-Jones, 
God bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Lady Tracy. They're saying, Sister Audrey, miss you so much. Thank you so much for your prayers. I received that, Lady Tracy. I know that's right. Deaconess Burrow said that. Bless you, Deaconess Bur and Deacon Burrow. Sorry about that. Uh, Sister Melanie Jackie Jackson, bless you as well. Sister Gina, she said, hey, sister. AME, I know that's right. Amen. Amen, Sister Audrey. Amen, Sister uh, Yvette. Listen, y'all, I'm so excited. Every week we have at least, I look tonight, we were up to 200 people on for Bible study. That's amazing. And we bless God. Sister Sharon, Sharon Johnson, bless you. Deborah Carter, bless you, Sister Carter. Brother Fred Thompson, bless you. Sister Priscilla Webb, God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Good to see you. Sister Kim, glad you're watching. Sister Piper, amen. Sister Deborah, God bless you. Sister Cassandra, thank you. God bless you. Deacon Brenda, bless you as well. Sister Latoya, blessings to you and Brother Antoine. Who's that? Sister Tia White, bless you, Sister Tia. Sister Christine, God bless you. Love to you as well. Shout out to the MEP. <laughs> I know that's right. Lady Tracy and the MVP. God bless you, Sister Barrett. Amen. Virtual hugs to First Lady, the executive producer. I know that's right. I know that's right, Sister Wright. She was on me tonight, too. She was on me. Sister Mary Miles, bless you. Hey, Sister Robin. God bless you. Hope all is well. Sister Wanda Day, hugs to you. She said hugs to you, First Lady. Amen. Sister Bernadette shows up. God bless you. Miss you. Virtual hug. Brother Kenneth Epps, bless you, man. Amen. From, uh, bless you. Uh, bless you and family for Sister Doris. Folks, Epps. God bless you, Sister Epps. Sister, uh, who's that? Bernadette Joseph, bless you as well. All those on conference call, thank God for you. My auntie is watching in, in Chesapeake. Bless you, Aunt Cooch. Brother Jackie, amen. Love and miss you too, Sister Kim. Bless you, Brother Jackie. I'm trying my best to keep it going. Sister uh, Slater, Cheryl Slater, bless you. Love you as well. Sister, hey, Deacon BJ, God bless you. The kid, who's that? The kid, the kid, uh, 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 yeah, okay. From Florida, in Florida, let me get it right. Nadidra in Florida. Welcome, Nadidra in Florida. We're glad to have you on. Sister Emma Griffin, God bless you. Hey, Sister Kai. Blessings to you, First Lady and the boy. She said, hey, my father-in-law, Mr. Robbie is watching in Chesapeake. Bless you, sir. Brother Will Spann, glad to have you on. Sister Pickett, George Pickett, bless you. Hey, Sister Connie Williams, God bless you. Hey, Sister Yvette, I'm going to tell Mason and Chase you said hello. Sister Patricia Hall, I'm going to let First Lady know as well. Hey, CJ. And my family, my son and grandson have received. Wow, okay, hold on. CJ and family, my son and grandson have received from the virus. Thank you for your prayers. Okay, CJ, I, I'm not understanding. Let me know what you're saying again. I want to say you're saying that they, they've been cleared. Let me know if that's the case. If so, we rejoice with you, Brother James Austin. Bless you. This is a jewel. God bless you. All the prayer words. Your son, Kareem, is doing much better and didn't have to go to the, onto the respirator. God be praised. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. We rejoice with you, Sister Jewel. God be praised. Sister Elaine, Sister Latanya, Sister Sandra. God bless you, Sister Holmes. Amen. Sister Adele, how are you? Good to see you on. Amen. Sister Marcella Presley. Amen. Amen. Yes, I know that's right. 200 households, at least 800 watching. Glory to God. I know that's right. That's simple metrics. I know that's right. Hey, First Lady. Sister Deborah Carter said, hey, love you. Amen from Trenton. Sister Emma Griffin, we welcome you from Trenton. God bless you. Amen. Uh, somebody just put in, rest in peace. Carlton Blue, member of New Hope East Orange family. All right, China Rose Damala Allen. Hey, inbox me some information. Your information, I'll reach out to you um, and, 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 and get more information on Brother Carlton Blue. All right, send, send me some information. Inbox me real quick. Double shout out to the twins from Sister Sylvia and Sister Deborah Carter. Love you, First Lady Hugs to you. Uh, who's that, Sister Denise? I know that's right. Praise it. Listen, we got to go. We're past our time. The Jackson family has recovered from the virus. <laughs> Praise God, Sister Sharon Johnson, that the Jackson family has recovered from the coronavirus. We bless God. May the shadow of his wings cover your families as always. I know that's right, Sister Vanessa. All right, y'all. We're going to log off. God bless you. We love you with the love of Christ. Remember, we're still igniting hope and empowering people. And we thank God for you. On behalf of myself, First Lady, thank you so much for tuning in. And don't forget, we'll see you here on Friday at noon for our time of prayer. Be blessed.